I'm curious to know if DVS1 playing in Pano is basically his version of what Etep Kyle did. And if it's a reaction to people like this, Sarah Landry. Are you aware who Sarah Landry is? I didn't know who this person was before I stumbled across a video of them on, I think, Twitter. There's a video of this lady on Twitter and she kind of turns back and looks all sexy and stuff, right? She looks all like seductive and whatnot, right? And hot and Abiana Booth wearing this amazing tight black outfit. The crowd are going crazy. And she just has this one moment where she just catches herself like, I'm a bad bitch. You know, you can feel it in her. Like she's, I'm a fucking badass bitch. <laughs> Like in, with all respect, you know, like, yes, I did this. I think, and I would, you know, I can't wait to get to that stage, actually, you know what I mean, as a DJ, where I'm like standing behind the booth and I'm thinking, fuck, you did that. You're a badass nigga, right? Like that kind of vibe. You could tell like she was feeling herself. She knew she looked right. She felt right. The crowd are going crazy. All her peers behind her, sucking her off and shit. Free shots all over the place. Couple of baggies on the floor. A bag full of fucking pills. Like just, yes, I did this, right? So she's feeling herself and doing it. But when I unmuted the fucking video, woo, the music was not for me. It was not for me in the slightest. But when I Googled her, I found out that she's listed as a, guess what? A techno DJ. And I was like, no way. This is not techno. This is not stuff that I'm used to listening to. So I just decided to jump onto fucking YouTube, type in her name and see her boiler rooms and shit. And I guess I'm the only one that doesn't get it because look at some of the views of her videos. She's got a boiler room set here from two months ago, only two months ago at the Teletech Festival. Boiler room, Sarah Landry. And it's got 1.6 million views. There's another video here from a play, from a festival called um, Verknipt. Verknipt Festival in Utrecht, right? That's in Netherlands. It's got 191,000 views. Another one from Def TV, 1 million views, right? Like, oh my goody gosh. Another set of hers, 272,000. 242,000, another one. An interview with 13,000 fucking views. 360,000 for another set she did in 2022 at that place um, in Verknipt and shit. So she's killing it, obviously. But it's a very commercial, it's maybe a very like, again, maybe closer to Serakin, but Serakin I think is a lot better personally. Big up my girl Serakin. I, I, I personally think she's much better than Sarah Landry. Like I would gladly go and rave, you know, um, go to a rave where she's playing all night long and I would never leave the dance floor. Like she's fucking good. Like I'm a, I'm a fan of her. I know some people don't like her, but I'm a big fan of her. I think mu musically she's a lot better than people give her credit for. Very, very, very underrated. But come on, bro. I had no idea who this Sarah Landry woman was and she's fucking killing it everywhere. Listen as a techno DJ, but obviously the sound is like very specific. And when I tell you it's very specific, I mean it, right? And I'm going to play for you a little bit. Let's just play maybe this one here. Let's do this one from the fucking boiler room, right? From two months ago. And we're going to just jump around so I can give you an idea or feel of what this is about. So you don't think I'm lying. Just, just hear this. Because this to me is like the worst type of music ever in the that I could ever imagine listening to, um, you know, casually, let alone going into a rave. I couldn't imagine doing this to myself, you know, voluntarily. I couldn't do it. I really couldn't do it. The energy to to teletech. Up next, we have the sounds of the sorrow. I love how they only get the niggas to jump on the microphone and introduce the DJ, isn't it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What go on, what go on. It's me, Nick Nog MC. Another DJ coming up in here. I'm not behind the booth. I'm behind the mic because I got a great voice. <laughs> BLM for black DJs, man. Where are I going for this, man? Let me get the fucking flags out, bro. Techno too white. <laughs> anyway, let me scrub forward a bit so you can hear the vibe. Let's go to this bit over here so you can hear what the music sounds like because this is not good to me. That's the opposite of what dbs one's about no groove no nothing just like bom, 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 bom. whatever genre of techno that is i don't want it but i'm wondering was that the reason why dbs one is switching to playing in panorama bar maybe he's seen the fucking he's, he's he's reading the tea leaves he had somebody read his palm he was like you know what the end is coming and there's more probably there's more there's there's more range and more ability to play interesting stuff within the house umbrella than there is probably with techno it's probably quite limiting, especially now, because the stuff that you have to play now to get attention, it's not the stuff that everyone wants to play, right? Like the, the Britney Spears edits, the 
Madonna edits, the pop, the pop edits overall, the Euro trash stuff. Like you have to really go down that route in order to kind of you're 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 basically. It feels like DJs are now having to like go down the Tiesto route. Like some of your favorite underground DJs are now starting to sound like Tiesto because that's the kind of vibe that people want now in clubs and shit. Like, which is kind of wild. Which is why I think maybe in a few years you're probably going to be seeing a lot more of those um. What you call it? A lot more of those people that you would deem to be underground, even like maybe Teletech associated DJs playing at places like Tomorrowland, if they haven't already, you probably end up seeing a lot of that happening very, very soon. Like these DJs are going to be playing at Tomorrowland very, very soon. But to me, this stuff sounds like awful. Let me go back and scrub again another bit so you can hear what it sounds like, right? Let's scrub to this bit here. Like, what is that? Don't get me wrong. It looks full. Looks amazing. All the kids are going fucking crazy, right? It's absolutely ram jammo, right? Caucasian after Caucasian person rubbing shoulders, sweaty, having a laugh. You know, chins fucking swinging from left to right, from Timbuktu to fucking Chicago. But but the music is absolutely shocking to me. Really, is shocking. Let's let's get this bit. One last bit, and we move on. Don't get me wrong, proficient DJ, she's clearly knows what she's doing, but god damn it, man, I couldn't imagine anything worse to ever play in my entire life. So I'm wondering, maybe this is Devious One's objective. Maybe that's why he switched over to playing Panama Bar now. Again, I'm reading too much into it. I'm a little bit inside the baseball stuff. I'm fucking reading into stuff that doesn't really matter. And I'm obviously being a fucking nerd with this sort of stuff. But hey, this stuff I'm interested in. I wonder if that's the case. Or did he just fill in for somebody who, who got sick? Someone got COVID and just filled, filled in and I'm making a meal out of it. Who fucking